Welcome to the Horror Next Door. We're back with our favorite new horror trailers from May 2021. But first, if you enjoy everything from the world of horror, movies, video games, masks, and memorabilia, please subscribe. Now, on with the trailers. Broken Veil Broken Veil is a puzzle platformer with horror elements that lets you experience a post-Soviet, provincial Russian town through the eyes of a young boy. Only you can help him search through the faceless crowd for the most important person in a child's life, his mother. Firstly, I think probably the most obvious thing to anyone that has played Little Nightmares is that this game looks very similar. Personally, I was a huge fan of Little Nightmares. I haven't played the second one yet, but I'm really looking forward to it, and that immediately makes me excited about this game. It does have some obviously differing things going on. It looks like there are some um, different perspectives than just the side-scrolling the whole time and stuff, and it just looks spoopy, and it looks fun. I'm really, really excited about this. So it's listed on their website that Broken Veil is coming to Steam sometime in 2021. We are console gamers, mostly, so let's hope that this comes to Xbox or PlayStation very soon. Considering that this is the developer's first video game, this game looks pretty cool. It looks very creepy, and the giant, I don't even know what that thing is, it's like a pig monster guy thing looks creepy hopefully there's more enemies like that in the game and they're just kind of holding that back not to show much but yeah we love our horror games so this looks interesting and we can't wait to play it resident evil infinite darkness set between the events of resident evil 4 and 5 this series takes place in 2006 after a hacking incident is uncovered at the white house Leon S. Kennedy was ordered to investigate, but encounter zombies when the White House is targeted in a mysterious attack. Basically, I feel like mostly anyone that's played a Resident Evil game or two, or all of them, or is into the Resident Evil universe would be interested in watching this. I think that the uh, animation looks great. I'm a pretty big fan of, of animated series. I've watched my fair share of anime and things like uh, Love, Death, and Robots on Netflix. So I think it looks really cool and well done. I like the concept that this takes place between Resident Evil 4 and 5. It's not just picking up where the series is now. When I first heard of this, I thought it was going to be a movie that was just coming to Netflix, but apparently it's a series. Not sure how many episodes it's going to have or if they're going to continue doing like more seasons or whatnot, but I have seen the CGI uh, Resident Evil movies that they've released previously. I can't remember the titles of them, but they were actually kind of good. I was surprised. Uh, I don't usually watch those types of movies, but they were actually pretty good and better than some of the live action Resident Evil movies they made. This just makes me more pumped for the new live action Resident Evil movie that they're working on to finally come out. Because that's going back to, you know, the roots, back to the mansion and the whole nine yards. And hopefully it's actually, you know, more horror and suspense and less over the top ridiculous action. Escape Room Tournament of Champions. Six people unwittingly find themselves locked in another series of escape rooms, slowly uncovering what they have in common to survive. The two survivors that we saw in the first escape room film join forces with the remaining survivors and soon discover they've all played the game before. The director of the first escape room, Adam Robitel, returns to direct this one as well. Actors Taylor Russell and Logan Miller also return. I remember when we watched the first escape room, we completely thought it was going to be a joke and totally ridiculous and just kind of a movie to make fun of and not take very seriously at all. It turned out to be so much fun with amazing set pieces, some really cool creativity, 
mostly likable characters and we were just invested the whole time. I, I even ended up getting it on Blu-ray after a while just because it's the sort of movie that's fun to go back to and maybe notice things that you didn't see the first time. For these reasons, I do have high hopes for the sequel, despite the fact that I do think, based on this trailer, they might be going a little bit too overboard with some of this stuff. It looked just so insanely ridiculous, some of the things we're seeing in this trailer. I don't even know how they would be possible. However, regardless of that, at the same time, like on the other side of that, that same coin, it's going to be fun to see how ridiculous and outlandish all this stuff is and how the characters get out of it. First impression on the other characters, aside from the two from the first movie, is that I don't really care about them, so I hope that they work on character development a little bit to maybe garner something that will make you invested in, in the other characters involved here. I just want to begin by saying that I can't stand the title of this movie, Escape Room Tournament of Champions. What's wrong with Escape Room 2? It's corny. What's up with Hollywood now and not wanting to put numbers after everything? Spiral from the Book of Saul. <laughs> What's wrong with Saul 9? <laughs> anyway, I digress. So I enjoyed the first Escape Room. And when it had its obvious sequel bait ending, the first thing that went through my mind was... If they do end up making a sequel to this, they need to explain more about the people that are running this whole thing and how are they able to run this whole thing because it obviously costs a ton of money to do this stuff. In the first one, everything took place in one singular building with all these random rooms that they go to and they try to escape from. Now, this one seems like they're moving around. They're not staying in one building I don't know. It shows them running around in like an alleyway somewhere. Like, I don't know. We'll have to see the movie. And then there's like a subway thing. So I don't know. It doesn't necessarily look, you know, from the look of the trailer, it doesn't look like they're isolated to one building. But yet again, this would cost a fortune to do. And how do you keep all that stuff like secret and not get caught? And stuff? Yeah. Like, how do you have, how do you pay all this money to have this subway car thing going on and then the the sand trap thing and all this stuff it's just it would be ridiculous <laughs> so i'm really hoping that they explain some of the backstory of the people that are running this thing the in you know the ins and outs and everything pretty much they need to do a hostile part two on this and i want to know everything that's going on and all the inner workings and who's got their hands involved, you know, is, are there some, you know, high up people involved in all this? Like, where are they financing this stuff? Maybe I'm looking too far into it and overthinking it, but still, that would be cool. I want to know all that stuff. That being said, I'm interested in seeing this movie and hopefully they explain some things. Also, the sand trap thing with the you know them getting sucked down in the sand reminded me of nightmare on elm street 4 with the beach scene i thought that was kind of cool <laughs> censor after viewing a strangely familiar video nasty enid a film censor sets out to solve the past mystery of her sister's disappearance embarking on a quest that dissolves the line between fiction and reality Based on the trailer, the film definitely has a retro feel. Loving the VHS tapes. The 80s are definitely one of our favorite time periods for horror, if not our very favorite. So it's looking like that's when it takes place. And whether or not that's true, it still has that vibe to it. So I really like that. A lot of the visuals are awesome. The lighting. I, I guess I feel like it, it has a sort of... Uh, Cronenberg uh, Videodrome type feel a little bit, even though I'm not like the biggest fan of that movie. I'm picking up on that and I hope they're using it more as like inspiration than a ripoff for lack of a kinder term. <laughs> I guess I think the main reason I want to see it is because I am a huge horror fan and I've been a horror fan since I was a very little kid thanks to my awesome parents who let me watch Freddy <laughs> and, and all that crazy stuff. And uh, 
I feel like this movie just reminds me of that time and just like being a kid and as you get older you realize wow maybe I shouldn't have been watching some of this stuff and I think just the aspect of going into the censoring portion of these movies and how they get rated before they get released and the cuts that have to be made and stuff is just intriguing and I'm interested to see that part of the film too. Like Hellcat was saying, the atmosphere of this movie is really what's what drew me in when I watched the trailer. The whole video nasty thing took place in the 80s. I'm not even sure if they still have the video nasty list, but that took place in the 80s. So that's why we're speculating if this movie takes place in the 80s or what. Just the whole retro style. They're watching everything on VHS tapes, which we both grew up with watching things on VHS tapes. Still do. <laughs> <laughs> the cinematography and everything in this and the lighting and, the, you know, the music and just everything about this just looks awesome. You know, cannot wait to check this out. Yeah, see if this, this woman ends up finding her sister and is she corrupted or what's going on here? As always, thank you so much for watching. Feel free to leave a comment letting us know what you thought of these trailers. All of the trailers we discussed will be linked in the description box below. If you enjoyed this video, please subscribe and don't forget to visit our store and social media pages. Until next time!